Hunger and hopelessness are driving Lebanese to the streets. The economy is close to collapsing. Protesters vent their anger at banks for preventing people from accessing their savings. And the long-serving political elite is being blamed for mismanagement and corruption. In recent days, the local currency has sharply devalued against the dollar. There were casualties among protesters and soldiers during confrontations that began Monday night. People went to the streets because there are no jobs. Children are asking their parents for food and they don't have money to buy them any. The young man who was martyred was a father. He had nothing to lose. If his daughter asks for food, what will he give her? He had nothing to lose. Calls for a change in leadership are not new. A protest movement began in October, but the ruling elite has clung on to power. Apart from a few, we have 128 criminals in parliament. They stole public funds and transferred billions of dollars outside Lebanon. Even the army soldier is oppressed like us. Their salary is now worth $300. Officials acknowledge inflation has increased by 50 percent, and 45 percent of a nation of six million people live below the poverty line. But they haven't presented any plan to restore trust in the economy and fight corruption. We are hungry. The revolution is against corruption. All officials say there is corruption. But what have they done? We don't see any thief in prison. Instead, they are shooting at the people. Rival politicians who have been in power for decades deny allegations of corruption and are blaming each other for the state's near bankruptcy. Government leaders are accusing their opponents of trying to topple them by tampering with financial stability that fuels the anger of anti-government protesters. The leadership's opponents say those in power are trying to hold them accountable for years of corruption. The state's finances are under immense pressure. Lebanon has a huge debt to pay and not enough foreign currency. The government also doesn't have many friends abroad. These scenes could be a warning of what's to come. Zena Khudr, Al Jazeera, Tripoli. Well, as Zena mentioned there, Lebanon's economy has been in free fall for months now, with jobs in short supply and the government struggling under massive debt. Over the past week, the currency has rapidly lost its value, forcing the central bank to set an exchange rate of one U.S. dollar for 3,200 Lebanese pounds. The government is in talks with the International Monetary Fund over a bailout. The five-year proposal aims to boost growth to 2% by 2024 and requires some 10 to 15 billion dollars. The money is desperately needed, with the IMF forecasting Lebanon's economy shrinking by 12% this year. Rami Khoury is a senior public policy fellow and journalism professor at the American University of Beirut. He joins us now live via Skype from Beirut. Good to have you with us again, uh, Rami. It seems like, I mean, it was just a few months ago, you and I were sitting here um, talking about protests in, in Beirut. What do you make of, of what's going on in Tripoli today? It's very predictable. This was uh, clear about a year ago that the economy was uh, gradually collapsing because the central bank simply could not maintain the levels of foreign exchange that were needed to run the economy. That created um, a lot of lack of confidence in the banks. Uh, depositors uh, were not able to take most of their money out of the banks starting about uh, four or five months ago. Um, the people lost their jobs. Um, People would not lend uh, very much to anybody. There was no real investment in productive industry. So uh, the whole chain reaction uh, happened. And the, the worst part of it now, and what you're seeing on the streets in Tripoli and, and Beirut and Sidon in the south and other places, are uh, desperate people, uh, really desperate young people who don't have a job, who don't have money, don't have savings, don't have any social protection insurance. Uh, the government can't help them out. Um, and they're they're desperate. They're, and their slogan is, "We're hungry. We're hungry." Um, and uh, this was very predictable. It's really a sign of financial mismanagement and political uh, poor poor governance. Who is to blame, though? You say it's 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 political mismanagement and, and poor governance. Understandably, people are angry. To what extent uh, uh, do they only have themselves to blame, though? Well, the uh, blame goes really to everybody. The central bank was the central actor in this financial engineering scheme, which some economists have called the Ponzi scheme, <clears throat> which eventually ran out of steam and couldn't be maintained. Uh, the banks themselves were very complicit. They were making huge amounts of interest on 
the loans that they were giving the central bank. The central bank was taking that money, financing the government spending, a huge government deficit year after year with a lot of corruption as well. And depositors who were putting their money in the banks were also making a lot of interest. So uh, that's why this went on for so many years. Everybody was benefiting, and people thought it would go on forever. But like most... Uh, uh, illusory Ponzi schemes, it doesn't go on forever. At some point, it collapses. The smart people got their money out early, and most of the people didn't. And now there's huge suffering. The poverty in Lebanon is now probably over 50 percent. Inequality is rising. Unemployment has, there's a two, 250,000 people okay. possibly have been unemployed in the last few months. Uh, it's just a huge uh, economic uh, implosion. Um, and the government has been very, very slow to address it. They're supposed to meet tomorrow to finalize a package of, uh, of decisions, uh, and it's still going to take months to, to actually get things moving if they do move. Yeah. Uh, how does Lebanon extricate itself from this mess, and, and will people tolerate the fix? People will tolerate the fix if it is a serious one that promises ending corruption, retrieving uh, billions and billions of stolen money and corrupt money, um, and uh, giving a promise that the economy will get back to some kind of even keel. It's, it's a problem that many countries have had. Uh, Greece had it, Cyprus had it, Venezuela. It's, 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 we're not the first country to go through this. All you have to do is reestablish confidence in the banking system. Uh, get investors to start investing in productive industries, produce uh, economic wealth that you then spend, and, and the economic uh, cycle then goes into positive uh, instead of negative. This requires probably 15 to 20 billion dollars of foreign grants and loans and investments, which, which will come if there is that critical change which requires serious, credible, non-corrupt, accountable governance. And this is one of the things that Lebanon has lacked. Really good to talk to you, Rami. Many thanks indeed to Rami Khoury there, uh, professor of uh, journalism at the American University of Beirut.